turn my mic up. Boy, yo. Take there. Yeah, yeah, uh. On the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. According to the Department of Transportation, there's 3 million truckers. If we can touch 10% of that market right. and help these families, I, I felt like we, we've, we've uh, done a terrific job. So, 100%. Marshall, <clears throat> how, how did you get into this space, man? Talk about life after football. How did you get into financial planning? Yeah, I, I've always been a guy that's, that's resourceful and understood the things that I didn't know and um, just seek them out. Uh, throughout my years of playing professional sports, uh, and, and you'll hear guys this, you'll, you'll, you'll talk to guys and what they say, and it's, this is like cold word that they're in trouble and they don't know anything. When you ask guys about their finances or what they have or where they're at, they always say, I got a guy. Mm. I got a guy. Right. When you have a guy, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I got you're, you. You're, you're in trouble. And I was a person who had a guy. <clears throat> you know, I was smart enough to have two guys. And I had those guys watch each other. Right. When I when I when I dove into financial services and really started to um, gain the literacy aspect of what we should know, you know, we work for the money, we spend the money, we work for the money, we spend the money. Why not understand how the money actually works? Right. How do you how do you how do you create? People keep talking generational legacy. How do you create that? What does that look like? Yeah. And and it just just trying to gather the information to get in that space. You know, nobody was going to give it to me. The yeah. guy handling my money, my guy, he wasn't going to teach me his job <laughs> so he could be out of a job. That's stupid of him. For sure. You don't do that. For sure. So I had to go out and, and, and seek the, the information. And once I got the information, now it's for me to give it. Yeah. And, and we literally, I sit down with people. I'm like, listen, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to provide you free financial services. All right. I just need you to, to take to obtain the literacy. Right. Like you need to become financially literate. Right, right. And if you become financially literate, then generational wealth only comes from you passing down generational literacy. Mm. Absolutely. And that's that's the crux of of everything that I do. Yeah. It it, it, it stems from the basis of I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make you defenseless because you have no reason to say no because I'm not charging you for anything. Right, right. Sit down. I don't care if you if you take it back to your guy and say, hey, why haven't you told me any of this stuff? Then have the conversation with him. Yeah, yeah. What What are some of the first steps that you took towards gaining that financial literacy? Like, like you said, because I'm sure it's not something that you were necessarily taught, right? You had to seek it for yourself. So, what What did you do in your journey? Uh, I had to take control of my money. Mm. Understood. Under, un, you understand what's coming in. You understand what's going out. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you're When you're When you're a star athlete, you got people paying your bills. You don't. You don't even know what's going out half the time. Right. <laughs> and, and it's crazy that that's the. But it is. And and now. Now, when I, if I have somebody doing something, I have I have spreadsheets of like, okay, every month I'm looking at it, I'm watching it, I'm saying, hey, this needs to be done, that that needs to be done instead of, oh, it's just done. Right. You 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 have you have to. It, it all starts with you becoming educated, and that's what I had to do. I literally sat down and realized, I was like, damn, okay, I made all this money. I, I'm not I'm not the I'm not the athlete who went broke. I did good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> this you. is not one of those stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but I made the money, and I, I opened up businesses. Uh, uh, most most succeeded. Only a few failed, okay. and that's that's part of being an entrepreneur. Okay. But but what I realized was, I wasn't financially literate, and and when you understand, people always say, well, how do you know you're financially literate? When you know, you know. Right. You know, you understand Absolutely. the operations of, of how your money is working. When, you, when, when you're financially literate, any question I ask you about your finances, you have the answer. Mm. I'm talking about from, from, from what, like credit to uh, all types of insurance, business, personal life, health. You know all of that stuff. It's not just in a drawer somewhere. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and your assets being managed, you understand every month. Or if you're like me, you'll look at, okay, let me see what my stock portfolio did. Let me see how my Apple, let me see how my Google, let me see how my Tesla performed today. I check that every night before I go to sleep. Right. Those right. are assets to me. For sure. I sold For sure. my Google. I'm kicking myself. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are the things that, that we don't dive into. We don't become obsessed with our portfolios like we do Instagram. That's a fact. That's a fact. When you first got into the space, did you target other athletes first? Like I tried. And, and, and how'd that go? I was not, I, I did not have 
enough. Um, I did not know enough in order to like to defend the other against, guy against yeah. their their I other guy. I didn't know mm-hmm. enough. So you I had to learn enough. more. I had, yes. Okay. Yes. So you have to you have to continue to gain education, continue to do appointments, continue to meet with people. Um, this business is all. It, I mean, I, I do continued ed- education every year. Because there's new stuff coming on the platform and you continue to learn, you continue to learn, you continue to learn. And now when I sit down, I'm equipped with the information I, I, I know, I need to know in order to help the athlete, in order to help the financial advisor. For sure. Because we provide financial services. We don't provide financial advice. And I want people to understand uh, the difference. I like advice, that. Yeah. Advice is just advice. Like, hey, here's, here's my advice. If it works, it works now. I get paid still. Service when you take your car, when you, when you when you buy a Ford, you can take your car to a Ford dealership anytime to get service. Right. That's how we are. Right. Got you. You. Get, you, you come here anytime to get service. You, your kids, whomever it is. Once we engage with you, you can use our resources at any point in time. Here's why. Got you. Because we don't charge you. Mm. Mm. Free. Free 99. That's it. We love free 99, especially, especially our people. We love that free 99. For, for, for but me. Here, here's the case. Yeah. It's funny that you say that. It's funny that you <laughs> say that. got him fired up. He said, hold on. Let me, let me go into something there. It's funny that you yeah, say yeah, yeah. that. We love free until it's time to talk about money. Oh, no. They don't, I don't want to get in there. I don't want... Hey, so... Um, how'd, your, how'd your portfolio do this month? Um, so how much you have saved up? Like, is, are, are you good? Do you know what a financial independence number is? Mm. Do you understand what that is? Um... Mm. Uh, uh, hey man, yeah, let's not talk about that. That's you know, you, you worry about your business, I'm worried about mine. You know, don't, count, don't count on other man's money, you know, right? Right, that right. Stuff happens. for sure, for sure. Wow, but, but those conversations are, are how if I'm doing something financially and you're interested in it, well, why not just ask me, hey man, I'm thinking about crypto, what are you doing? Mm. Hey, I'm, I, I want to know about this stock, how, how does that work? What, what, how's it doing for you? How's it performing? Right. When we start, when we as a people start having those conversations, right. that that's when we're going to grow. That's when we can start to really help each other. Yeah. But but we don't like it. It's taboo, man. Sex and money. We ain't talking about it. We ain't talking about it. We won't talk about those two things. That's a fact. That's a fact. I like that, Javon. So Marshall just now said you guys provide services. Talk Absolutely. about some of those services that you provide. So as Marshall Marshall mentioned, we uh, we do an assessment, which is called an FNA. Uh, you're very familiar with it. I think I may have sent you a, uh, a sample of the uh, yeah. What's FNA. that acronym stand for, just so people know? Financial Needs Assessment. Okay. The FNA. Um, yeah, the FNA, uh, where we do a deep dive into your uh, the way you manage your financial resources. And then we highlight areas in which you can improve. And then we also uh, talk about areas where uh, you're not doing enough. So it's, it's really eye-opening because... Uh, even though I had been in the industry, I never had uh, someone do one for me. And Marshall took me through my financial needs analysis. And it, it just it, it really makes you think about where you're where you're spending your money. Mm. And uh, it, it, it's a real eye opener. But but we offer an entire uh, suite of products. And, and that might be something you might want to that might be a question more geared to Marshall. Okay, uh, I'm more uh, more of a guy that's in the trenches with the truckers. Yeah, saying hey, you know, you guys really need to 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 uh, uh, you know take a look at how you're managing your resources. Here's my team. It's being headed by Marshall. They'll really you know point you in the right Get, direction. Got you. All right. So the the F and A. How long does that typically take? Anywhere from it, it depends on you, okay. but it can it can be as short as fifteen to twenty minutes, and it can be as long as forty five to an hour. It depends on what what assets you have. Mm. Um, it depends on uh, the amount of bills you have, the amount of money you have going out. Okay, and then we we also um, you know in that is your goals and dreams because what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at what where you're at now, and where you want to go in life. If you have if you want to you know I, I want a plane, I want a boat, you know I, I want a yacht, I want to I, I want to have a bigger house. All of those things need to be mapped out. You, you're not just going to one day wake up and be like, I can go get it now. No. Right. We plan yeah. those things. Right. We Okay, here's what you need to do in order to in order to get this house. Here's what you need to do. Here's how much you need to save each month, each each week, however you want to do it, or each year. Right. Every, there's a strategy to everything. Absolutely. Every, mm. Everything that's been done in life has been strategically planned. And we try to get people to see what... When you sit down 
and you have a plan, where does that take you? Right. Now, it doesn't stop there. We look. We, we want you to understand, hey, is your credit in the best position? Do you even know? Do you know some of the things that's hitting your credit that could be killing your credit? Because money is everything, but credit is credit is credit is power. Credit is right. better right. than credit cash. Is, yeah. credit cash is, is king, but credit is, credit is queen. Is yeah. that what they say? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do student student loan modifications. Big business for the government. Yeah, government yeah. killing killing people with student loans. We try to modify those. We try to see which ones we can we can eliminate, which ones we can have them take back. How, how we can cut costs on you paying student loans. Right. We look at all insurance. I don't care what I don't care what type of insurance you need. If if you need key man, if you need E and O, we we don't care what it is. We're the broker. We want we want you to know. See, I, I was just having this conversation with Javon. This here's what happens. Let's let's say you have a car, right? And you have State Farm. The minute you buy a house, the laziness in us, guess what we're going to do? We just call State Farm. Hey, can you add my... You don't check the market. <laughs> right, for sure. Check, I know I'm guilty of that. I, I have one person covering everything. And then yeah. State Farm then say, hey, you know what? You can get some life insurance too. Okay, I'll take that too. Yeah. You don't even know what's out there for you. So what we do is we sit down and we say, hey, let us look at all of that. Right. We, we, we want to take it to market and make sure that you're getting the most coverage for the best price. Mm. And after we do that, if you have assets that need to be managed, we'll help you with that. If you have a 401k, annuities, we want to explain it to you. Hey, here's what you're working with. Understand the implications. If you take it out early, these are your penalties. Hey, 59, 65, explaining all the rules, the taxes, all the laws that goes with your benefits. Mm. A lot of companies provide you benefits, but they don't tell you. Hey, hey, I'm gonna give you a 401k, you're gonna work here for 40 years. You think you're good. Right. And then you find out that when you go, okay, hey, you retire, you retire at 59, you take it at 59 and a half, um, you understand that like you're gonna get less. You take it at 65, you're gonna get the full on benefits, but that's gonna get taxed. Absolutely. What 20, 25, 30%? Now you're thinking about your retirement and, and you're like, hold on, wait, I was accounting for all of that money. Because you didn't know that you had to pay taxes on that money. Right, right. Yeah. And and now, now you got to go drive Uber, yeah. <laughs> Instacart. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Now, yeah. You gotta, now you got to go do something to supplement your income because you're retired. For sure, for sure. What, what do you think is the smallest change that people can make that will benefit them the most? Budget. Budget. Get, get a budget app. Get a budget app and figure out how much you have going out. We know how much we have coming in. Right. But once you figure out how much you have going out, I'm talking down to the penny where everything goes, and then you start to look at it, you're gonna say, "Man, I eat a lot." Uber Eats, oh man, this is killing me. You know, like, right? Whew, boy, right. oh man, this the gas in my car. What? what I'm driving a lot. You, you're gonna you're gonna start to realize we accumulate bills, and and here's here's the thing: the more money you have, the more bills you accumulate, and you actually stop looking at them. Mm. They just become a number instead of an individual, like a line yeah. item. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm, uh, my burn. What's your burn? Oh, man, we twelve grand. Okay, cool. Twelve grand a month. Yeah, yeah. I got fifteen coming in. All right, so you you, know, you pause it on the tree. So let, let's really look at that twelve. Let's see if that twelve is really needed. Is it necessary? You might have you you might have Hulu, Netflix, you know, Apple TV, <laughs> and you ain't using two of them. Why you yeah. got them on? Right. right <laughs> Why you right, got them on? Right. Right. right you right. got a four bedroom house. You got cable in each room, and only it's just you. Why you got the cable yeah. in each room? Just, just I'm, man, it's it's silly stuff. You know what we do? I could imagine when you're having these conversations, people just hate you, man. They're like, man, you about <laughs> yeah. to make me turn off the damn Netflix? <laughs> like, what are you doing to me uh, right uh, now? Only, man? only when it's a couple, and and purposefully, when I sit down with the couple, I make them sit like this so they can't look at each. Each other. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> if they look at each other, she's going to be like, talk about getting my hair done. Do my hair and nails on <laughs> That is funny, man. That I, is I think funny. if most people knew, so there's fundamentally, there's three buckets, right? We like to talk about. There's tax now, monies that are going to be taxed now. And I tell this to all the guys all the time. There's monies that can be taxed later, and there's money that is taxed never. And we show people how to tap into that that never bucket. Mm. And and most I've never people, heard that before. Too. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Is that something and, you guys came up with? Is that like a philosophy? No, that's no. just yeah, okay. that's, no, that's this is this is uh this this has been around before us. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. 
like wealthy people invented that. That's not. We, <laughs> That's why I never heard of it. It makes sense. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's funny, but it's real. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A lot of the products, services, and strategies that we use, it's been out there for a long time. You just you, you just don't even know to ask. You can't ask for what you don't know about. Right. You, right. you, you just, you can't. Yeah. It's, it's like when we talk, it's, it's funny, man. When we talk about financial literacy, hold on, wait, let's think about this. So in grade school, there was no classes about financial literacy. In junior high, middle school, no classes on it. In college, or in high school, no classes on it. In college, no classes on it. They don't talk about financial literacy. Yeah. All right? So where are you supposed to learn this? If your parents don't know it, how are they going to pay? They can't pass down what they don't know. Right. And, and, and <clears throat> if you understand just the crux of our system and how it's built, and in in the in the tie in between the government and the banks and how all of that stuff is structured, um, it, it it starts to make sense, man. It just you, you realize why if if everybody was financially literate and they knew what to do with their money and they understood the value and their worth, some of these jobs people wouldn't do. Right. It just you you just when when you understand in, in, in your time becomes value and and you realize that hey, um, and, and and you guys you you figured it out. You figured out how to become an entrepreneur. Like, you're going to build somebody else's dream or you're going to build your own. Right, right. <laughs> when you figure out entrepreneurship, that's that's where it starts. Because, listen, the, the guy that's hiring you to, to, to work a job, if he's paying you 100 he's making three. If he's paying you 50 he's making 250 Right. There's no way he's going to pay you what he's not making. That's a fact. And and, and we, we don't think about that. And I'm talking about everybody. Everybody, man. Banks. <clears throat> just just a little knowledge on banks. This is funny. This, I always take people through this. Let's go. I, I just want to just, just paint this picture for you. All right. So if I told you, give me your money, all right? Let me hold it. I'ma charge you to hold your money for you. <laughs> that already sounds pretty good, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. right? That's your bank account. Yeah, right? I'm gonna charge it. you yeah. to hold your money, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now. <laughs> just, just, just follow me. Okay. Here, here's how it goes. Now, if you decide that you want to borrow some of your money back, I got to charge you interest. If you want to open a business, <laughs> this is your money. Now, understand this: this money that I have in 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 these accounts for you that I'm charging you for, I'm only giving you a half a percent. And I'm charging you more than half a percent to hold your money. Now, if somebody else decides that they want to borrow money from us and I have your, let's say, $10,000, I can loan that person up to $100,000 because I have your 10. And I can charge them 10%, but I only have to give you half a percent. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. No, that's, so, the, that's something, not crazy. Something adding up. Yeah. Right. That's the bank. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. For every one dollar they can borrow, they can loan out ten. Yeah. Now, we go to the bank, we stand in long lines, they hide behind all of this stuff with our money and ask us all kinds of questions for us to get our money. <laughs> all right. And then guess what they do? Before you walk out, what do you take? You take a sucker or a dum dum. That's true. Oh, wow! What a punchline, man! Yeah. A sucker or a yeah. Bye. Well, I didn't even thought about that. Why is there suckers and dum dums in all the banks? Yeah. Uh huh. Because you're the sucker or the dum dum. There you go. There you go. Uh-huh. You know, somebody is at the top level of banks is laughing yeah. at us every time we, and they're like, "Hey, okay, take one for your kids too, yeah, because they're gonna be the next sucker yeah. and dum dum coming in line." Yep. So let them get used to the taste. Absolutely. Wow, that is uh, that's eye opening, man. That's yeah. that's, that's, banks, that's awesome. Banks, people don't even understand the stri- like they've been they've strategically planned this out. You you go you go you go you're a college student. You don't have a job, but you need a student loan to go to college. You got it. We, we got you. We got you. You need a credit card when you're in college. We got you. You don't need to have no job. 
We ain't got to check your credit. You good. Right? Right. You want to go get an auto loan? Oh, yeah. We we got you. We got you. We might, you know, based on not having credit and stuff, we got you. You want to go buy a house? You know what? We'll loan you money on the house. We just, you know, we just need to know where you're at or how much you need to put down. We got you. Right? Go try to get a business loan. Oh, hell no. Nah. Get up out of here. <laughs> get up out of here. Yeah. Right, right. Get up right. out of here. Go right. try to get a business loan. Right. Hey, here's my paperwork. I got money coming in. Here's what I have. You don't qualify. Yeah. Mm. You know why? Everything else that I said, you're coming back. You're coming back to get more money for education. When you get a car, that car going to get old. You're going to come back to get a new car. When you get a house, you're going to have a family. You're going to get a bigger house. When you open a business, if that business is successful, you ain't coming back. <laughs> That's a fact. You're not coming back. That's a fact. How, how, how do you beat it, though, man? We need banks, right? We got to put our money somewhere. This is true. So what do we do? Well, you got to sit down and talk to some financial uh, strategists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 figure that's, out how to play the game. And, and, that, and that's what we do. We, we, exactly. we teach you yeah, how, to, yeah, how to navigate the, uh, the Tetris business world. Yeah. And, and the world of managing your resources. And, and, and I want to make myself clear. We, we don't just do this for, uh, this, this service won't be just offered to truckers. I mean, if you are a broker or if you are a manufacturer or a shipper, you know, all of these components and individuals that make up the logistics industry can benefit from this. Right. And so, I mean, you'll be surprised how many businesses go under because they're they're not managed, they're managing their resources properly. Yeah. So so it's not just the, the drivers and, and and when I say that guys aren't managing their their resources properly, I, I, I want to make myself clear that's not everyone. Right. Obviously, you know, there, there are some guys out there that's that's doing what they're what they're supposed to do, but the majority of the truckers that I have a personal relationship with, they're, they're just not they're not doing what they what, what they supposed to be doing, and, and we offer this to them. But like Marshall said, it's, it's taboo. Why do you think you that's know? the case? Why do you think in the trucking industry it's so taboo, or people don't want to talk about their money, or people are you know trying to hide what their actual financial uh outlook is like what wh- why do you think that that's so Here, here's my question and you could answer this yeah. what, what form of education must you have to be in the trucking industry the the barrier is extremely low, low. It's, right. it's a low barrier to and enter. that's yeah. that's like that not just trucking right but any any business if you go start it and you don't educate yourself around the operations and not just not just okay, drive the truck or fix the truck or loads logistics. No, 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 no. And this is this is why this is financial <clears throat> services is around every industry. Everything, that, every, every there's a there's a financial component about everything that we do. You have a financial component about this show right. and what you do. Right. You know, and we got to talk after the show. But, 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 <laughs> think, think about it. Think yeah. about it. The budget to do this. What you're bringing in, how do you how do you make it work better? Right. How do you, how do you scale it? How do you grow it? That's that's all we do. We tap into the things that you're not paying attention to. Right. Right. You know, I I think there's like a uh, maybe like a certain uh, what's the word I'm looking for like like stigma towards like financial services like people. Just feel as though like maybe they're scammy yeah. or they're like I yeah. don't want to I don't want to give them my money like you know what I mean like yeah, do, do you guys get that? No, they are they are it can mm. and it can be yeah and it can yeah. be that's that's why that's that's why I approach it with the holistic way of I ain't charging you nothing right so you don't have that excuse with me right <laughs> right if you sit if you choose to not sit down with me that's that's because you just you just don't want to no doubt if I'm not asking you for anything I'm not charging you anything. Now what? Yeah, yeah. Could you could you talk about like maybe like a use case or like somebody that you talked to and you saw them do a turnaround to where like before you spoke with them, this is what their financial what their financials look like, and after you know this is what you know they they had this much progress or something like that. Could you just give us an idea? Well, do you have anything like that? No, I'm, I mean I'm gonna talk about myself. And okay, just, just what that's what perfect. I, what I do for me, yeah, um, because you know like. Like, not only do I have this business and I have other businesses, but I'm a business as well. So, so I, I have to, I have to make sure the things that are coming in, I like, I keep keep them separate, and and strategically for tax implications, 
how things work. Okay. What what I pay, you know, me the business, um, it's a little bit more income compared to the businesses. So doing all of that stuff, once once I started every quarter, I I check my financial plan. I'm, I'm I check the numbers. I'm adjusting the numbers. I'm like, okay, this is different. This is here. This is that. I mean. Man, I've I, I've saved more money and saved myself more money. Like I I I run my E and O. This is what it was. Oh, you know what? I found the better company, and I'm always checking. I'm always checking. What's the E and O? That's uh, errors and omissions. Okay. Arizona so omissions. basically, if 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 somebody decides to, hey, Marshall, I didn't like the plan you did. If I want to sue. Hey, you know what? Go see these people. Right. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. So just just it's business insurance <clears throat> stuff like that. Okay. Um. Just understanding, having a better understanding of, and I'm and I'm I'm like to the penny now. Right. You know, I, I know where everything is. What when it, when it comes to my kids, when it comes to family, everything. And I didn't I didn't have that kind of control. Mm. And it's I, I'm telling you, it's it saved me. Um, I'm gonna say the first when I first started, it was probably a couple of you know maybe. Maybe twenty five thousand. Now it's 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 in like the hundred grand, right. two hundred grand area that I'm saving myself. Just living efficiently, like making sure that I'm doing the things that's necessary to put me and my family in a better position. And that's all it turns out to. Because if 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 I don't do that, then it's easy to slip back into just spending here, spending there, doing this, doing that. Right. Yeah. Understanding right. that I just just little stuff. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I I you you fly somewhere. Um, book an appointment with somebody. Take a meeting. That's a business trip. I can write that off now. Absolutely, right? right. <laughs> Just understanding the basics of how to how to operate your business and how to finance how to finances work around your business. Right. Right. We just don't take advantage of the things that are out there for us. Big corporations do, but little corporations forget to. Mm. Mm. As far as like, do do you put like systems and stuff in place to automate this stuff? Yeah, we have we have we have a lot of systems. Okay, uh, there's a lot of automation. Um, when people come in and they want they they want to be serviced, they want the service. Uh, we sit them down with the literacy components first because if I'm having these conversations with you and you, this is another language, right? Absolutely, right. and that's what scares people. You know, it's like it's like if, if you don't speak Spanish and people speak Spanish, you're like. What are they saying? <laughs> What's going on here? Right, right, right. I definitely what, want to simplify. Yeah, it. yeah, and that's and that's what we do. We we want you to understand. We want you to know what a bunch of these acronyms mean. We want you to understand how when we say, "How's your money working for you?" Boom, you go into it. Right. Hey, my stocks. Here's how they perform. These are my bonds. I got some property. This is where they're at right now. This property's up. This property's down. It's producing this amount of income. Whatever you have. Hey, my crypto is here. Hey, here's what I have in savings. Here's what I have in checkings. You know, I have my money management account over here. These are my, you should be able to, this stuff is serious, man. This is right. like, this is your money. Absolutely. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. For sure. You just mentioned crypto, right? I just want to kind of get into that because I mean, as you know, as we evolve as people and, and financially, like there's new currencies coming out every day. What yeah. what do you think about that? And, and how does that play a part in your financial planning services? I like it. Um, we're literally on the verge of um, being able to house, like like bringing on a company that can house people's uh, crypto. Okay. Because having your crypto, having it housed in a, in a, in a good good spot is, is what you want. And um, also providing different type of, if, if you want someone to handle your assets, or if you want to learn how to handle assets, or if you just want to be able to understand assets, being able to tell people where to go, giving them safe places to go is things that we're doing. But the crypto world, it's it's unique. And and here's the here's the thing: crypto blockchain, you keep hearing those two. Right. Crypto blockchain, crypto blockchain. Um, you know, banks are trying to have their own crypto now. Yeah. I've, I've now the heard. beauty the beauty to crypto is it's cryptic. The government, if you make money in crypto and you sell it, you don't have to pay taxes yeah. on it. But in order to pay taxes on it, our government are going to regulate it. The reg they're regulators. Yeah. The bank. Yeah. You know if you take more than nine thousand five hundred dollars out of I mean ninety five hundred dollars out of the bank, they gotta report that. You take ten thousand, hey, where that's going. Right. They gotta yeah. report that to right. Big Brother. Right, yeah. right, right. For sure. So so Crypto's they wanna find way. out how can they regulate it. But <clears throat> but the beauty of the crypto is it can't be regulated. It's not it's not it's not 
as a commodity in the market to where the, the brokers control whether it's up or down. Crypto is controlled by the users, by the owners of it. Right. Bitcoin but, only owns so they, they only put out so much coins. So those coins, they just go up in value based off. If I sell you, if this coin is worth a thousand dollars and I sell it to you for fifteen hundred, the coin's fifteen hundred now. Right. Nobody gets to decide how much the coin is worth. That's right. The coin is fifteen hundred. You're not selling. If you sell it for less than fifteen hundred, you. you just devalue the coin. <laughs> right, right. And right. you lost money. For sure. For compared sure. to compared to when you when you trade commodities or you buying stocks and bonds, you're not in control of if it's if it's up or down because they can sell more or sell less. They can control your value of uh, of your stock. How much right. money they put? But with all these well, institutions getting involved now, do you think that at some point there will be regulations around it? They're trying to, but I don't know how they're going to because crypto, real crypto, operates on the black market. It's it's how it's how black market um, people trans trade. Right. Yeah. Right. Buy and sell. Yeah. For sure, for yeah. sure. I now think- the blockchain is going to be being able to see blockchain allows for no mistakes to happen. Right. See, you can track everything on the blockchain. Right. All of this, all of this money laundering and all of that stuff. Blockchain, ain't, <laughs> that's going to be done. Right. Is that what people need to pay attention to more? Is actually yes. the, blockchain, the blockchain, blockchain, not get caught up in the fancy Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. No, no, no. the crypto is here to stay. Right. Okay. It, it's it, it's here to stay. Okay. And and. and I mean, they're 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 trying to get rid of like actual money. Right. Know, they they want they want green. They they want to get rid of that. They want everything to be electric, electronic, and that that puts it on the Digital blockchain. Currency. It's trackable now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you were about to say something. No, I was just going to say that I think the biggest uh, uh, currency, a uh, second to um, Bitcoin, is uh, Ethereum. That's okay. the, that's the new big dog. I I just bought some like a month ago. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's a lot. I mean, there's these new coins popping up every day, man. Yeah. People are getting into the space yeah. now. You got Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah, you got- well, do- do- Dodge Dogecoin was, um, you know, Elon was- Musk's little joke. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it was a joke. It was it was basically a way to short the hedge fund. Okay, you know, if, if, if people don't really understand what happened there, can can you, you explain? Know, it? So so just just in the world of hedge funds, hedge funds, what they do is they take a lot of money and they short major companies, and what they in so. Just think about in Vegas. If you go play craps, right? You can bet you can play with the house, or you can play with the, everybody at the table. Right. So when you play with the house, you're on the don't pass line. <clears throat> right, right. So what, what what the hedge fund did was they paid they put their money on the don't pass line. They're not going to hit their numbers. And so what Elon Musk said was Elon Musk was like, "This is this is crap. How y'all going to do this to American companies?" So what Elon what, what Elon Musk did was, "Hey, hey, America." Let's call these these jokers out. The hedge fund is trying to short our little companies. Mm. GameStop, AMC. Yeah. yeah. Support. Everybody went, start transacting, start buying. Boom, boom, boom. They hit their numbers. The hedge fund was about to lose their their head. Right. <laughs> and and understand this in the hedge fund, the people handling the hedge fund, it's not their money. It's other people's money that they're investing. So once once now the margins are made and those dollars are called, the hedge fund has to pay, but they still have to pay the people whose money they because they guarantee the return on that money of so much. So what they have to do is if they guarantee you five, they're, they're saying that they're going to make 10 to 15 and they give you your five and they get to keep the rest. Mm. And that's how the hedge fund operate. Mm. So what happened was... We found out that Robin Hood wasn't really Robin Hood. Robin Hood froze people's accounts and wouldn't allow people to transact anymore so the hedge fund wouldn't short. Mm. So now, who's Robin Hood working now, for? Now, now anytime, <laughs> anytime, anytime, any one of us are investing in a product and that product, the money is going down, nobody freezes anything. We get to lose. But they protected the hedge fund. Right, right. Man, Elon it's all about playing a game, man, and being in the it, right it seat. It is a game. It, it, it really is. It, it's a game. And I think if you learn the rules uh, or if you partner with someone who knows the rules, like like us, yeah. ourselves, um, I think you have a shot at winning the game. Yeah. And uh, I, I think next year is going to be a big boom. I really do. I think the market is going to come back. Uh, this year, a lot of companies took a hard hit <clears throat> uh, in the logistics sector. 
uh, you know, rates, uh, shipping rates are through the roof. And of course, you know, shippers don't want to pay. So um, there's a, tr a trucking shortage. And this year was just a hot, well, I'm sorry, not this year, 2020 was a hot mess. Right. I think uh, 2022 is going to, uh, it's going to be a roaring line. I think uh, the market is going to come back strong. I think uh, the flatbed industry is going to do well because there's more steel production. I think uh, the uh, the general goods sector is going to do well, uh, just because there's more uh, you know <clears throat> products being uh, manufactured like lotions and soaps and so on and so forth. Uh, food's going to be food. Food's never going to fall off. You, we're always going to have a need for that, right? But I, I think we'll see more trucks on the road in 2022. And it's, I feel obligated to be in the trenches with these guys. And as, as long as I have someone like this by my side, yeah. who, and, and we're going to, we're going to really, we're going to keep driving that message home. Yeah. Hey man, here's what you have to do. You have a wife, you have a kid. They're going to be, want, they're going to want to go to college someday. Right. They may want to go to tech school someday. You make enough. Don't think because you make 50, 60 grand a year, that's not enough to save. You know, that, what's that, the rule of 72? We, we yeah, we teach them the rule of 72. Could you go that, and get into that? Uh, you want to well, touch on that? People don't know. So let's say you invest. If I told you, hey, man, I'm going to give you 5% on your money, do you know how to how to equate that 5% to when you're, how, how often your money is going to double or when your money is going to double. Like nobody tell you how to calculate those things. Right. And we sit down, simple, rule of 72. Same guy who, who invented something that we, we we learned in school and we never used, he used MC Squared. Right. You remember that? <laughs> we all learned that, right? Right, for sure. And we never apply it. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he that was about. He invented the day. rule of 72. Okay. And the rule yeah. of 72 is just basic. If you take your interest, whatever that interest is, and you divide the number 72 by that number. Absolutely. It's going to tell you how many years it takes for your money to double. Pretty simple. Yeah, you can look so it up. So whatever you investment can you have, boom, that's it. That's all you have to do. Mm. If somebody gives you 4% interest on $20,000, and, and you take four, you divide it by 72, divide 72 by four, yeah. and that's going to tell you your money's going to double every Pretty simple. So right. often, yeah. I, I think... Hold, hold on one second. Now, think about, <laughs> this. think about this. Going back to the bank. Yeah. So the bank give you a half a percent. So let's just say they give you 1%. Uh -huh. So 72 divided by 1, your money going to double every 72 years. Sitting in the bank. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good way to think about it. Think about Never it. thought about it. So at that. 29, wow. you put in 20,000. You're like, okay, yeah, I, they're, giving me, they're giving me my yeah. 1%. Money double every 101. years. <laughs> You got to die yeah. one time for your money to double. There you, know, you, know. you know, RJ, you asked the question earlier, well, how come more uh, individuals aren't taking advantage of, taking advantage of these type of service, services? And I think, now that we're talking about it, some people feel like they have to make these large lump sums of money for the system to work. It, 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 that's not the case. I mean, if you make a modest income, the system can still work for you if you play the game right. right. And and uh, so I think a lot of people figure, well, oh, I make forty grand a year. It's not for me. Yeah, it's not for me. Right. You know, I make fifty grand a year. It's not for me. Well, let me tell you this: my wife and I, we started uh, when we were twenty six years old, putting a hundred bucks a month away for my oldest son, and. We increased it to two hundred bucks a month, and now I think it's around two fifty we do per kid. Okay, he has three years of school paid for. Wow, he has three years of school paid for. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up, man. Right. And, and when and, you need, when he needs it, it'll be there. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. A lot of times we don't plan for the future. We're like, ah, it's not a lot, or it's not a big deal. But when it need, it's going to come right in time. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Nah, for sure, for sure. <clears throat> so, so. You have an affinity for the trucking industry, and I don't think we really got into like your your background in trucking. Just yeah, just, absolutely. Let's touch on that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I uh, I talked about my buddy earlier who um, works in the uh, oil and gas sector. He uh, convinced me or suggested that I take a look at the industry. Um, at the time, I was uh, <clears throat> heavily involved in sports marketing and sports training. Okay. And um, I was about to have my first kid, and he was like, Javon, uh, 
you might want to take a look at this sector because it's, it's really growing, it's, it's trending. And uh, took it to heart, thought about it for a while, and ended up reaching out to BNSF Logistics, which is a Warren Buffett-owned company. They put me through their training program. I spent two weeks in uh, Arkansas. I think this, excuse me, Spring, Springfield, Arkansas, is where they're, where they're located. <clears throat> and uh, basically, that's why I learned the ropes. And uh, I mean, his system is just, it's Warren Buffett. Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? So we were head and shoulders above everyone else. And later on, I got, I started getting these calls from recruiters. Hey, Javon, hey, Javon, this company wants you, this company wants you, this company. So I ended up being offered an opportunity to come and, and be the uh, manager, manager of business development for a company called Elite Transit Solutions. At the time, there were only eight employees. And Mike, who's a great guy, Mike Johnson, he said, Javon, I, I, uh, I think you can help take us to the next level. I love your work ethic. Uh, you know, you seem to know what you're doing in terms of how to grow a business. So he gave me my first real shot at helping a business really take off. And uh, we got our first million dollar account by just beating up the phones. <laughs> Good old cold call. Yeah, good old cold call. We had eight people just beating up the phones and, and uh, you know, for every 20 no's, you're going to get one yes. Yes. And we got that one yes that took us to Chicago, million dollar account, mm. Mm. million dollar account, just like that. And so now Elite is up to, I want to say they have about 60 employees Okay. and they're, they're in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, so I've been in the industry for 15 years. Now I'm with the uh, Unishippers. Shippers. And, uh, which is uh, home based in uh, Salt Lake City, uh, Utah. Uh, I do some business development uh, activity for their uh, Overland, Can Kansas office. <clears throat> and so this 3PL Perks program is kind of a spinoff of both what Marsha and myself put, put together, okay. which is my, my logistics ex expertise and his financial background. Um, but I've, I've always been licensed in the insurance industry because I always had in the back of my mind merging the two industry, industries. Got you. All right, let's <clears> talk <throat> about 3PL Perks. Absolutely. Right, let's talk about how, how it works, how people can get involved. Let's, let's, let's break it down. Yeah, so, so we have a website. You can go to www.3plperks, the number 3PL, P-L, Perks, P-E-R-K-S. So that's the number 3 the letter P, the letter L, and the word perks, P E R K S dot com. It talks about our program, uh, you know, the different incentives that uh, it offers truckers. You know, we were talking about how, let's say you're a trucker, you're making 40 grand a year. Yep, 40 grand. Damn. BPL so Perks has a, has a, has a client. My <laughs> <laughs> bad. I'm just saying, you could have made yeah. me at least like 60 or 70. Okay, so let's say you're you 75 let's, or something. Let's you're say. You're in the South or something. You probably so the average, and, and I was just throwing out a number. We know the average trucker know, makes about 90 grand a year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So That's let's better. say. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. I, I can sell my chest <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, right. okay. Make okay. 90 grand a year. Okay. All right. So let's say you make 90 grand a year and you have an option to pull loads for company A or 3PL perks. Okay. And they both pay the same price to haul that load. Okay. Well, guess what? Every time you haul a load for us, you're going to accumulate cash value points. Mm. Let's say a year down the road, you have a thousand points sitting in that bucket. You can then take that thousand points and dump it into your 401k that's being managed by Virtuity Financial Group. Got you. So we're giving incentives to, or you can take that and buy it on your insurance. We have partnered with the third largest trucking uh, insurance broker in the country uh, through Crest uh, Insurance uh, with six physical locations on the West Coast. Okay. Uh, so so you can take that that those monies, you can put it in your 401k, you can put, put it towards your employee benefits if you're a, a company owner and you have multiple trucks, or... You can, uh, like I said, buy it on your, your insurance. If you are a shipper and you hire us to find trucks to ship your product, we will allocate points for you as well. Okay. Okay. So from a, from a carrier standpoint, I'm a carrier. Mm -hmm. um, if it's 3PL perks <clears throat> is like a brokerage, 
right? And you guys have access to freight. Absolutely. Right? Now, now in terms of, because obviously if I'm a driver or if I'm a carrier, the first thing I'm going to care about is, am I getting the same type of freight that I'd be able to get elsewhere? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, we, so we have, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, uh, flatbed freight, mm -hmm. drive van freight. We don't do a whole lot of reefer freight. Uh, we, we don't have a whole, a big presence on the West Coast. Uh, most of our freight is coming out of the Southeast region and Northeast region. Okay. We do, uh, we move some retail freight, a lot of steel coils we move. Uh, so, so the freight's there. Um, but again, you're not going to get that incentive anywhere else. Right, like right, right. We're going to give you. 100%. So yeah, so, so, okay, so you, you, you pull the freight through 3PL perks. You get that incentive. So you said it's points that you get. It, it's yeah, it's cash value points. And and how does exactly does that work? So 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 uh, there are certain prerequisites that the load has to meet. You can't pull a, a you know a twenty uh, mile load and expect to get right. you know some type of incentive. Right. So I think the minimum uh, length is like hundred miles, right? Okay. Which isn't much in the truck. Okay. <clears throat> um. So so. Based on um, if the load's being uh, exported, like if it's going to Mexico or North, North America, you won't get credit on those loads as well. Okay. And obviously, if the cl client does not uh, pay, then you're not going to get the incentive. So we'll pay you for, for as a broker. Okay. But if the client never pays us and they're indebted to us, those those points won't won't go towards that, that low. Okay. So so there are some some stipulations. Involved. For sure, for sure. So okay, so I'm just trying to just so, so people listening could understand. So is there? There's obviously different tiers based on how many miles you run or whatever the case right, may right. be. Right, right. So you get a certain amount of points. Like, is it like one point? Is it like ten? Points? No, no, no. How it's it's so if it's LTL freight, you get five points. Okay. If it's a truck load, it, you get ten points. Okay. So so let's say you move. 10 lows, that's 100 points, which is 100 bucks, cash value. Okay, so yeah. 100 points equals $100. Absolutely. And then that $100 is then uh, invested into? A 401k. Okay. They can buy it on their-, their Any uh, service. Yeah, any. Any whatever service, service that we that, offer. Whatever service that you might need or have in your business, yeah. then you can apply those points to a bill or whatever it is. Like, hey, oh, you know what? We accumulated- 10,000 points. Um, right. uh, our insurance cost is, what's what's that bill? Oh, okay, yeah. Can we apply those points to that? Bam. You yeah. just got a discount. Any type of service, whether it's a financial product or a protection product. Got you. So you're working anyway. You yeah, you're working saying? anyway. And we're going to give you an incentive. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of it. See, we, we realize that, and not everyone does, we realize that, the trucking primarily and the, the logistics industry is the backbone of this country. And we have to keep it healthy. And uh, with people like you and myself, I think we're able to do that. People need to know that everything in this room came from somewhere. Right. That hat Marshall's wearing came from somewhere. Yeah. This shirt came from somewhere. And, and, and nine times out of ten, it came on a truck. <laughs> no you doubt. know, so. No doubt. But, but yeah, uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, if you visit the website, all you have to do is send us a uh, uh, your carrier packet. We'll get you set up. And if we find freight in your region, we'll offer it to you. Uh, we don't have a low board, per se. We do uh, use uh, third-party low boards like DAT360 and so on okay. and so forth. Okay. Got you. So so if someone is looking for... So would you, you contact them or are they able to go through? Just, just so how, how they so, find the freight. Like so, just on a regular day-to-day -day -day basis, how are they finding the freight? How are you communicating with them? So, 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 if we're, so if they're a regional carrier, let's say they're in the Northeast region and we have an RFP in that region yep. and we know they have a presence in that region, we'll send them the RFP. And we'll let them bid on those lanes for the, uh, yeah. So okay, so if we you. have a customer in that region, we'll let them bid on those lanes. Gotcha. And if they're rewarded awarded those lanes, then so you guys are in effect finding like direct shippers, yeah. and customers for people that yeah. have like dedicated lanes. Yeah, in the, in the absolutely. Way. Now, also uh, R J, if you are a asset based carrier and you have contracted customers, we're willing to partner with you and implement plug and play our system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you have a uh, contracted, let's say 
Sears. I'm just throwing out a name. Yeah. Is that even still a thing, Sears? Sears. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't right. know Sears. Okay, so let's say. <laughs> All right. I was going to say Kmart, but they're not around <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so let's say Target. There we go. There you go. All right. Target. All right, so let's say Target has an RFP that goes out, right? Yep. And request for purchase. Yeah, request for for per, uh, proposal. for a proposal. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and we engage in that RFP, and we win, let's say, ten lanes. Okay. And we know that you are a trucker, and you service those lanes. So, <clears throat> and we let's say we award that lane to you as a broker. Okay. Every time you haul, every time you move freight from point A to point B, you'll get those points. Gotcha. Now. If it is freight that be, that's being brokered uh, on a low board, you'll get those points as well. And we just track all of that, you okay. know, with our internal system. As long system. as you're signed up with 3PL Yeah, perks. as long as you're signed up with 3PL perks, yeah. Got you. Got and you. then... You're doing the business. We're just giving you a perk right. to do the business. Absolutely. And, and, and just look at it like a rebate. It's like, hey, you buy this, you get this back. Yeah. So that's, that's essentially, you, you're getting something back. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Nah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like you said, it's, it's just you, you're going to be doing the work anyway. Absolutely. You might as well take advantage of yeah. something like this to where you can get additional services and offers mm -hmm. with the work that you're already doing. Yeah. That's you, it. You know what I mean? But let's say you're an asset-based carrier mm -hmm. and uh, you have contracts in place with clients. You can take our system and just plug and play with, with your clients. Right. And we have the formula on how to do that and still help both parties benefit. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So cool, cool, cool. I, I, I get it. How is it working together, guys? I mean, you guys are friends. I mean, you guys have different kind of energies. Javon, you're kind of like laid back. Marshall's like, yeah, ready to go. Like, like <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that. It's um, it's good, you know, because uh, like I know, I know what I know, and he knows what he knows, and we get to teach each other, you know, because we we both had to learn a little bit about each other's industry for us to make this make sense, right? And um. Sometimes we're, we're speaking a different language. He's talking his language. I'm talking my language. And we have to like, hey, 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 hold up one second. I have to rem remind myself, all right, he doesn't know as much. And he and I got and then he he got to remind himself like that. I don't know as much. But, um, you know, when, whenever whenever you're whenever you're trying to do for others, whenever you're trying to create things. Um, the goal is bigger than you know what what all goes in. Do we do we sometimes not under, understand or we're, we're not understand? Yeah, that that's going to happen. Right. That's a part of that's a part of a partnership. Right. You Absolutely. Know, that, that's sure. the that's the what makes him him and what makes me me is is how we come together to make this thing work. But um, you know the goal and the target to 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 service the industry is th that's what it's about. It's not about. Us getting along, we 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 know each other. I mean, we're we're going we're going to get along, and we're not going to get along. Right, right, that, right. That has that that does not matter. It's okay. At the end of the day, are we servicing the clients? Absolutely. Are we giving them a better product? Are we providing them something that the industry isn't? And I can say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. What's, what's your take on that, Javon? You share the same I, sentiment? No, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. I mean, we we've known each other for. A very long time now, about 40 years. Right. So, uh, you know, I know his personality. He knows my personality. Uh, I know his butt, what, what buttons to press to, yeah, yeah, to tick yeah. him off. He knows how to tick <laughs> me off, although that's hard to do because, I'm, like you said, I'm pretty laid, laid back. back. Laid but, back. but I've always seen Marshall, I mean, to put this relationship in true perspective, uh, Marshall's always been a uh, big brother for mm. me to look up to. Nice. And we spent a lot of blood and tears in the, in the early years on, on, this, on the field. And I remember uh, when I was learning the playbook, I, I would have to go to Marshall and say, you, you do this on this play or you do that on this, this play. And, and I can remember I was having this conversation on the phone with him uh, <clears throat> probably a couple months ago um, where we were on the one yard line and the head coach called a, uh, or the offensive coordinator called a uh, wishbone formation, which is three running backs, right? Yeah. And Marshall was supposed to get the ball. And I said, Marshall, let me run it. And he looks at me and goes, you better score. <laughs> <laughs> I scored. I scored my first touchdown. My, I was a ninth grade freshman. I was playing varsity. 
I scored my first touchdown on that run. Right. But 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 so so now you know why his stats are <laughs> still <laughs> just still goes yeah. back to motion. <laughs> so so yeah, but but yeah, I've always I, and even when I was in high school, he would fly me out to San Diego when he was in college, and when I, I went to college at UNLV, he would still fly me out to to San Diego, and we would hang out. So uh, yeah, I I don't think we could uh, ever say anything that'll that will ruin this relationship. Marshall, financial <laughs> services of football, man. Which one do you enjoy more? And which oh, which, man, which one a, are you more proud of? That's a that that's tough. Um, I'm gonna say I'm more proud of financial services because um, you know when, when people see you as an athlete, they see you in a certain space, and it takes a lot to let them know that that you're more than just an athlete. Mm. You know, it's it's. It's it, it goes back to the LeBron shut up and dribble. You remember that? Yeah, for sure. Like you know, it's like, um, I uh, the fact that I get to now show people intellectually, you know, what drives me. Not you know my physical skill set isn't what 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 people are now getting to see. They're getting to see intellectually um, how I operate and how I do business and what I go about and. Um, a lot of the things, a lot of the things that I applied in football, I apply in business. Um, and, you know, it's if there's one thing about football, I tell people that I, that I definitely apply about business is, um, you know, the, the mindset of playing the position of running back. You know, they give you the ball, guy, get you get tackled by two, three guys, they knock you on the ground, you get back up, give me the ball again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like right. a, it's, it's kind of kind of crazy mentality in a right. sense. But but in business, that's what it's like. You know, somebody says no. Okay, cool. Give me somebody else. Let me, let me. I, you know, this, you continue to um, to understand what the goal is uh, instead of um, of of just dealing with that early satisfaction or or the things that that's necessary. So, uh, football, football, um, hard work, hard work, and 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 skill. Like I, I was, I was talented at football, and a lot of things at football came easy to me. Um, this business, it's in business. Period. You know, it requires um, just a little bit more. Right. You know, I, I have to give this uh, a little bit more, a little bit more attention. And um, whereas, you know, in, in sports, you know, hey, hey, my, I'm gonna make you stand up. <laughs> right. And you're you're either gonna cheer or you're gonna boo me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one way or the other. In this field, in this field, um, you know, you have to make people feel like um, that you can service them and that that they are important because that's all we want to know. We want to know that we're important. Right. I want you to know that that your financial situation is important to me. And and the minute that we engage and we 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 start to interact. Um, I'm trying to find out how do I how do I help you get to the next level, right? And, and what can I do, you know, if to 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 help you do that? And that's it's it's just totally different. It's a whole nother world. But without a doubt, um, being an athlete, talking about finances, and uh, being able to to tell people, hey. Um, these are some of the things that you can do to make your situation better, right. regardless of how much money you have. Absolutely. You know, it's just you just you're not getting that. <clears throat> like you, you, they're not they're not telling you that on YouTube. You know, you, you can't you can't go get this information anywhere. For the sure. bank's not telling you. The financial advisors, Morgan not, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, you know, uh, Wells Fargo financial advisors, they're not giving this information up without you paying for an appointment and then paying for the strategic plan. We're giving it to you for free. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, I mean, what you guys are doing is, is definitely innovative. I mean, it's something that I've never heard of before or seen. So, you know, it, it's, it's going to take time for people to, be able to embrace it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But I think once they do embrace it and, 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 and look at, you know, what you're offering, I mean, I think people are going to eat this up, man. Absolutely. Because like you said, you can't really lose. No, you can't. It's a win-win. Yeah. I mean, you're going to ship, the, you're going to, you're going to ship for someone. Yeah. You might as well get the perks. Yeah. You know? So yeah. do you, do you have any plans on like, how, how do you plan on expanding your, te your territory and your markets in order to be able to attract more carriers? Is there a plan around that? 
Yeah, there is a plan about, uh, around that. Uh, I don't want to go into detail. Okay, okay. Into de- uh, I don't want to share too that's, much. That's in- top secret. Yeah, that's top secret. <laughs> okay. we, we were talking about that earlier. Okay, okay, too. okay, cool. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously that's something that people will yeah. want to know. Um, but, but, but yeah, I, I think it's awesome you know, what you got. Go ahead, Marshall. You know, RJ, um, you, you were just saying people might not be ready for it. It's going to take a while. Uh, and I, I think about this all the time, you know, and I'm, and I'm old enough and to, to remember, you know, before there was a Samsung and before there was an Apple, uh, there was a Motorola and, and, and Motorola, a- Motorola ran cell phones. That was their deal. And Motorola <laughs> missed the they, they, they missed the transition from analog to digital. And they said, oh, we're, we're good. I don't want to make the change. Can you find a Motorola phone right now? <laughs> no, sir. Maybe on eBay. It's going to be hard. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. you're right. Yeah. You're right. We're, we're, we're in this space to where, I mean, people sometimes are reluctant to, to always carry a cell phone or, or, or what the digital world is providing. Um, and the change is happening. And we're not going back. <laughs> we're, we're not going back. When, when you start to see credit cards on phones, we're not going backwards. Right. Yeah. you got to understand what's going on here. Right. Like, we're not going backwards. This digital age, Zoom and what it's done, um, these shows, you, you had to have like a, a major syndication. You don't have to have that anymore. That's a fact. We're, and we're not, we're, I keep saying this, we're not going backwards. The stuff that we're doing is innovative. It's ahead of time. It's before your time. Do it before your time. Mm. I think, RJ, it's also important for your followers to know that this isn't something that we just woke up and did overnight. No. This took two years to come together. Mm. There was a lot of red tape we had to maneuver around. Uh, it took uh, We had to use accountants. We had to use attorneys to, uh, to legitimize what we were doing. Uh, to make sure we had all our I's dotted, T's crossed. And uh, so so it's not something that just... Wasn't overnight. No, it wasn't overnight. There's a lot of thought <laughs> it, went into this. It's been this. well thought out. Right, right. And, right. and, and I'm going to say this. like, we, Obviously, some of the stuff that we have is proprietary. <clears throat> and, um, and we could like, oh, here's what we can go into. But then it takes away from why you should sit down with us. Gotcha. Like, we, like we, we need you. We... we would like you to sit down with us. Right. I don't want to say we need you because people are going to take it, take the free, you know, what I mean? <laughs> right, take right, the freebies right. or not. But but we would like people to sit down with us and just ask us the questions that you you sometimes don't want to ask people because you don't want people to know you don't know. So instead, you just sit there like I don't know, but I ain't saying nothing. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like where does that get you? Nah, for sure, for sure, for sure. All right, man. Well, listen, I think this is, uh, I think we can start wrapping up the show. I mean, you guys have definitely bought some gems. Marshall, you've been going off all show. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, before we go, it's it's law on this show that we always have. I have my guests always give a final thought. And that thought could be, you know, anything. It could be about entrepreneurship, spiritual, wherever you want to come from. And then we just have to let everybody know where they can connect with you, where they mm-hmm. can learn more about 3PL perks, more about virtuity. 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 Financial. Financial group. Um, group and, uh, you know, just in, in, in all that. So let's start with the final thought. Javon, I'm going to have you go first. And I'm going to yeah. let Marshall, Marshall go second. So go ahead. Start yeah. with the final thought. My final thought is if you're going to do something, uh, regard, regardless of what it is in life, go full speed. Go all in. I don't do it at all. And I talk to my kids about that all the time. Uh, you know, once my, one of my, my sons, I have four boys. He uh, started a sport, I'm not going to say which sport, and halfway through, he wanted out. I said, nope, you started it, you're going to finish it. We're going to finish the season. After the season, then you, you, can, you can walk away. So, so my suggestion would be, and I don't care if that's basket weaving. <laughs> I don't care if that's, go all in. Learn everything you can about basket weaving. What different fibers you can use. What type of uh, needles, uh, you know, whatever. Just go all in or go home. Okay. Um, but that that's my take on life, absolutely. I love it. It's a fault. Oh, man, um, so much I can speak on. But I'm, a, I'm first of all, thank you for having us on. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. You know, being an entrepreneur, uh, it, it, it's, it's tough. And people don't understand the mindset that it takes. 
Um, and what you're doing for the trucking business, providing them these resources, these gyms, getting people on, entertainment. Um, they, they have a community to go to to get answers. And um, without your, you know, your thoughts behind this, um, you being courageous to do this and bring it out, that's what makes this happen. Now, um, in being an entrepreneur, people don't understand that's how you break from the system. When you start to create your own opportunities, people sitting at home waiting for opportunities. A lot of people sitting at home, they just collecting the stimulus money, the unemployment, and, and they don't understand where that puts you. The, us that are out here, entrepreneurs, creating our own, creating opportunity for others that, that, that wouldn't even happen. Um, we want to welcome them back into the workplace. We want, we want those people to, to feel like, hey, this is a place you can come and, and you can get this information, you can get this knowledge, whether it's, whether it's about trucking, whether it's about finances, whatever it is. Um, we just don't have enough stuff like this for us to, to go out and get the information so we can do the business the right way. Uh, it's not always about money. I think most of the time it's about information. If you don't have the right information and you don't have the right resources, then you can't make things happen. And um, whether it's you know us or you uh, doing stuff like this, providing this this content to people, uh, somebody out there, even if it's one body, you change you, you could change somebody's life and put them in a space, and they're gonna let, they'll they're gonna let you know. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's a, it's a yeah. very gratifying feeling. I've I've had kids walk up to me and say, hey, you know, it wasn't the play that you did. It was it was this. It wasn't running the ball. It was this block. They just they remember they remember things. And, and how you make people feel, you know, it, it goes a long way. It, it goes a long way. So kudos to you and what you're doing and creating this opportunity for us to, for us to talk about what we're doing to, to all in all help people. No Absolutely. All in all, that's what it's about. I love it. I love and and it. we're in talks still with people like uh, Metro Max and, and some of the uh, other larger dispatch companies out there. Uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out how we're going right. to, you know, come together. So uh, it, it looks, the future looks bright. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, my goal, if, if we can't help all 3 million, you know, I want to touch, <laughs> I want to touch at least 10% of that. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, of that 3 million, we'll see. And it's how you touch them. Yeah. You know, whether, whether you touch their ear gauge, their eye gauge, um, or you, you literally provide them information. You know, touch co contact is different. Right. And I look at this. This is the contact sport. Right. You know, not like football. It's contact. Like how do how do we get information into your sphere? And yeah. there's just so many ways of doing it. No doubt, no doubt. And where can we find uh, information on Three PL Perks? And uh, if you go to the website, Three uh, PL Perks dot com. Uh, we also have an Instagram page, which is just Three uh, PL Perks on on Instagram. But it's a fairly young page. There's not a whole lot of content on the page yet, um, but if you go to www. Uh, the number three, the letter P, the letter L, and the word perks, p e r k s. dot com, you'll find uh, information on how to reach out to me. Uh, again, uh, if you're a carrier, if you are a dispatcher, if you are a broker, uh, manufacturer, uh, warehouser, uh, distributor, distributor. Uh, all of these different uh, professions can benefit from our services. Dope. Hey, thank you so much, guys. This has been awesome, man. And, you know, more than I expected, man. You guys are bringing the yeah. heat, man. I really, really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hustle fam, you know how we end it all the time. If you smell something burning, it's only a desire. And the newest, greatest show on turf is out. <laughs> <laughs>